dear students we are back to the class of geometric design we have been discussing module 3 which is related with the design of alignment and in this particular area in the previous interaction we had a discussion on the factors which a person as a traffic engineer or a planner should take into consideration while fixing any alignment and in that direction we talked about that alignment should be easy it should be direct it should be economical it should be decided on the basis of consideration to the factors like traffic, geological conditions, hydrological conditions, geographic conditions and so on. Now, when we have taken these into consideration, then how we are going to fix up the alignment is another issue. And so, as to look at that, today we are going to talk about the various surveys which we can use so as to fix an alignment. Mind it that when we are doing these surveys or we were trying to identify the various alternatives related to the alignment or we are going to fix finally one alignment which is to be developed all those factors which we have considered previously becomes the input to that. So, they are not redundant they have to be taken into consideration and they will keep continuing going along with whatever the decisions we are going to take. Now, when we come to these surveys there are usually four steps when we are going for a new alignment. That means, it is a total version area, we are interested to connect two locations A and B and we have to identify that in which particular direction our alignment should pass on. If you remember in the previous interaction, we did talk about that there is a possibility of the various types of contours which can be there and then we need to see that how we are going to traverse these contours and so as to reach from point A to point B. Now, when we are looking at this particular aspect as being enumerated here that there are going to be four steps that means, the very first thing which we are going to talk about is an office study or a desk study, wherein we try to rely on the information which is readily available with us in terms of different type of documents. And we try to identify that what are the possibilities, is there a possibility of going straight like this or there is a possibility of going in some other fashion something like this or whatever the post possibilities are there, we have to look at that. And when we have this type of an idea, then we go to the next step which is a recurrence survey, where we try to gather further information on all these possible routes or alignments which can be there between a location A and B. And based on that ground information, the field information which we have, then we may probably have lesser alternatives available in hand and that is where we are going to have more of the data being collected and number of tools are also going to be utilized in that and that will result in the preliminary survey. And out of this preliminary survey, finally, we are going to have one alignment only, which is going to be utilized as a final alignment. If any other data is required or anything which is being left, which is not being collected in the previous three steps, then that needs to be done. And the result is going to be in terms of the project drawings and the detailed project report. So, these are the ways we are going to look at the fixation of an alignment and we are going to talk about all of these things in the subsequent slides. When you look at a photograph which is being provided on the right hand side, now this is not basically for a new alignment, there is already an existing alignment which is being shown in red color, but there are some issues with that and so as to tackle those issues, maybe you can see that it uh, the new alignment which is being fixed in the violet color as being shown here is more smoother as compared to the previous one and is probably going from the outside of the habitation which is there. So, it will have less of the impact of the local traffic and the traffic can be a through traffic which keeps moving at a desired speed on this particular new alignment. In this case then we may find that the utility of the initial steps is not going to be there and we are going to talk about the final step only because there is a small stretch which needs to be taken care of and that is how we are going to do it. Let us start with these steps which are there. The first one is the desk or the office study. 
Now, this desk or the office study by the name itself defines that you are in your office, but you are trying to collect the information. The desired thing is that you have to connect A and B, the two cities. Now, what information is available to you? That information is available in terms of documents. Now, what can be the various types of documents which can be collected here? The very first thing can be the survey of India maps or there can be the Togo sheets. There can also be the aerial photographs which have been collected from time to time and that provides you an idea that how the development is taking place in which direction at what extent. It may be in terms of the master plans of the towns and cities because you are going to connect them. So, you need to see that whether you are going to pass through a city or if the development is taking up at a very faster rate there is a denser development than in that case is there a requirement that we should be providing the alignment as a bypass to that city and we just keep outside and there are few connectivities which are being provided. So, whatever is that extent is there if your alignment is coming in this form and this is dense development it is better that we discuss or we decide is something like this. And of course, there are going to be certain connectivities from this particular habitation to this bypass, so that they also remain connected, but at the same time the traffic which is moving from A to B is not being hindered in terms of its mobility. So, that is the another thing which we need to look at by way of the master plans. Another information data can be the geological survey of India sheets. Now, these geological survey of India sheets from the name itself defines the strata, defines the what type of soil is there, the rock mass which is there, whether it is an intact rock mass or it is fissured or are there different uh, characteristics of the geological formations in terms of folds, faults and then if they are folds then in which direction the dips are there all of these things and these, these are the points which we have discussed when we are talking about the various factors. Apart from these then what are the various specific geographical features which are there they are also important. So, we have to look at that also within the geological data the it may be a, another thing which needs to be looked at is related to the water the hydrological data which is required at what level the groundwater table is and if you are talking about the surface features then in those surface features how the things are looking, what type of the drainage patterns which are there. So, this is another important thing or we can see the characteristics, the drainage characteristics so, all of these things they are trying to capture out of the available information. There can be a Indian meteorological department information which can be like rainfall intensity in an area because it is going to define the various elements. So, if you are talking about the cross sectional elements we have discussed say for an example camber. So, we have to look at that the drains which needs to be provided it is also going to take some space. So, we have to identify it is we are not only talking about a single line we have to develop it in terms of a cross section. So, we need to get more information about it, the temperature which may be important with respect to the design of the pavements, the wind velocity important while you are going for a construction because the material the mixes which you are using they may have the moisture and all we have to see that also. We have to collect the information in terms of the contours, in terms of the habitations which are there at different locations and whether there is a possibility of connecting them, what are the networks which are available. So, any type of networks not only the road networks we can talk about road we can talk about rail system because both of the things can be connected or a new facility which is provided can connect them. Any other such feature which is there which is being depicted by those maps photographs etcetera we need to take care of those things. And these all of the things are available at different scales. So, we work with that particular resolutions and we try to identify and try to create a framework in our mind while we are trying to develop an alignment or fixing an alignment that what is happening around and then we have to going to create a line which is basically a possible alignment through that development or through that open area. So, once we have got an idea 
and we have tried to come up certain such alignments which can be there as I said that we are going from A to B. So, it can be straight, it can be another one like this or another something like this. So, whatever are possibilities which are there as 1, 2, 3 and so on. Now, the another aspect which we have to do is, is to see at ground level that whatever the information which we were having from all those particular sheets, is it correct or is there any change in that particular information over a period of time, because those maps have been created not every day, they have been created at a certain interval. So, for that reason now we have to go to the next step and that next step is a reconnaissance survey. Now, when you are talking about this reconnaissance survey, we are as I said we are in a field now, there is a possibility that we may have a already available alignment or a existing network. So, we may utilize that existing network also while we are trying to go along a particular line which we have created during our desk study or an office study. So, we are going to look at these all alignments and alternatives and when we are trying to do the inspection in field we have to first of all ascertain that whatever the topographic features which are visible in the maps or the sheets or the photographs are they really in the same form or they have changed. Is there a change in the terrain conditions because of say some query conditions may be there people have been taking out the material. So, the things may change. What are the existing tracks which are available which have been utilized by the local people so as to commute from one site to the another location? Can we utilize those tracks as a part of an alignment is another thing. What are the availability of different categories of roads in that area? And all of these developments when we are trying to look at then those networks what are the route lengths of those networks? The idea behind this is the possibility of using it as a part of alignment. Now, when we are looking at this and say we are going from this direction to this one or there is a change in the direction, then in that case we have to identify what are the locations where there is a change in the direction and that location is going to be a location of the curves. There may be undulations, so if undulations are there we have to see that what type of gradients are there and whether we have to ease those gradients tomorrow when we fix up the alignment and go for construction. Then is there a requirement of the specific features like bridges or tunnels? If it is so then what is the size in terms of length, in terms of the width which can be provided at that particular location? number of lanes, number of other features related to the roads. What are the various characteristics of the drainage are these changed or not? So, they are same as they were depicted in the maps or if they have changed, if they have changed then we have to make a record of that, because accordingly the things are going to be differing. The climatic conditions and the data, meteorological department is providing all of this information. So, we are lucky for that and we can get hold of that information maybe for last 5 years, 10 years and so, so as to identify that what exactly is ha going to happen tomorrow. Any developments which have taken place, this may be along the alignment, this may be on the sides of the alignment and because of these developments, one thing which happens is that there is a change in the land value. So, if you have to acquire land for the construction of a road along a specified alignment then this is also going to cost you. So, it will be into the cost of the project. So, that becomes an important thing or any other such important thing which has happened in a particular area and which results in an attractions because this is going to talk in terms of the traffic demand. So, we need to look at that all of those things which may be happening and people may be interested to visit those. The soil type and profile and characteristics mostly being done by using boreholes. So, borehole data is going to be there. So, you have this natural ground level which is being shown like this and your alignment is passing through in this particular area. So, what we do is we just go for a hole which may be say 3 meters in depth or it is more than 3 meters in depth. So, this is some depth which is there. 
Now, when you go into this, you may find that there is some strata of uh, soil and you will dig out that material and what you are trying to look at is that you are going to go for the characteristics one thing and you are in these characteristics the very important thing is the bearing capacity that is it is going to be able to take the loads which come at the top. So, this profiling of the soil type or the strata is being done by use of these boreholes. Hydraulic features in data is another important thing. So, that is also to be looked at we have talked in detail about what type of hydraulic data is required. So, we are going to collect all of those information and do working on that and the geological features in the data is again on the same track which is there. Now, if you look at on this side top corner what you found is that there are connectivities which have been provided starting with from A and you have to go maybe from to B and there are different ways in which you may go while considering the contours which are there. So, if we are looking at these contours what you found is that if uh, connectivity is being provided from A to B which is uh, this is A and this is B. So, a direct line is the shortest path it means if uh, the traffic is operating on this one you have the least of the operational cost, but then it all depends upon the terrain condition. What we found is that if we are going from A to P to Q to B then we are going to encounter steeper gradients. If we are going from A, P, L, M and B then we have the flatter gradients and if we are going with A, P, E, F, G, B then again we have the flatter gradient. So, maybe we have these two options which are there which are alternatives to each other and we are trying to look at the further information through the Raconan survey on this these particular alternatives. So, we have got these information then only we are going to have a further decision and what needs to be done. Apart from what we have discussed in the previous slides there is also another important aspect which needs to be taken care of is the ecological environmental factors because this may result in different permissions which needs to be acquired before we start construction. So, permissions from government authorities will be required. Availability of the construction material manpower and machinery. So, if this is locally available then it is the best thing which may happen, but if it is to be transported from any other location then that means it is going to add to the cost. So, this is also an important aspect we have to take care of it and if the construction material is available, but not is up to the specification can be modified locally is another thing which we should try to find it out. Availability of any other network or railway line which could have been developed over the period of time uh, the time from where you have got the information about the various uses in that area is what is another thing we have to take care of. Now, once we have got all of these information on all the 3, 4 or 5 alternatives which we have drawn while sitting in the office as a desk study and examined in field during uh, through the reconnaissance survey what we are going to look at is that is there a possibility of dropping anything as we have seen previously if we looked at here we could have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 alternatives could have been there, but now based on the different conditions which are happening though even though it is a shortest route, but then it is passing through number of uh, contours and uh, may not be feasible. So, we may say that we are going with the flatter gradients and out of 4 now we are having 2 in hand. So, that is the decision we are trying to take here and we have to take into consideration the not only the connectivity that means we are connecting A and B, but the connectivities can also be in terms of obligatory non obligatory points which we discussed as a factor or we have to look at the economics, economics in terms of the construction, in terms of the operation, in terms of the maintenance. So, all those economics needs to be looked at and we have to see that whether it is a quite a feasible alternative which can be taken up or not. So, once this decision has been taken based on that the eliminations are going to be there and we will be left with only those which we can take forward for further consideration. So, once we have decided that we are left with some 1, 2 or 3 alternatives in hand as being shown here in yellow or red. Now, the next thing is that 
we have to collect more and more information of along these particular alternatives of the alignments and that is where the preliminary survey comes into picture. Now, when we are looking at this preliminary survey, there can be different ways of collection of the data. Nowadays, we have uh, various advanced techniques also available. So, based on all of those techniques and the incorporation of those techniques, what we are trying to look at is we have to identify the various features all along the alignment and we are getting that information on the features, it is going to define whether we are in a position to provide the curve at a particular location or not, because there may be restrictions, restrictions due to the development which has taken place in that area, we may not be able to provide say a desired 500 meter radius and we have to reduce it to maybe 400 or 350 meters or similarly there can be any other condition which may prevail and we have to ascertain through this preliminary survey at what exactly is the condition which is there and whether we can go ahead with this particular alignment as a final alignment or not. So, one type of a survey which is there is defined as a traverse or a triangulation survey and this traverse or a triangulation survey tries to collect the information on various aspects, the various aspects like the physical features which can be there. The physical features can be in terms of a building, they can be in terms of say the trees, they can be in terms of uh, any other type of a development, say amusement part or any other thing or uh, there is a uh, agricultural field which is obviously in somebody's name as a farmer. So, we have to look at whatever various types of physical features which are there, we are going to collect that information and when we are alignment is going like this. So, if there is a tree here, so at what offset is this tree? is what we are trying to find it out or there is a building then what is this distance or what is this distance. So, we have a channage 1 say channage 2, channage 3. So, we are going to find out these distances and then if we have the dimensions available of this building then we can plot it also. So, that is how we are going to find it out what are various things which are there say there is a Nala or a river which is passing here. So, what is the extent of this? So, so channage here and a channage here depending on the high flood levels as well as the normal levels which are there we have to identify because then we are going to have a bridge at this location to be constructed. So, we need to collect all of this information. Then there is a curve here. So, at what is the location of this curve? What is going to be a deviation angle or if we are talking about a uh, vertical profile then at this point see a vertical curve is there. So, what are all those locations which are there we need to identify we have to quantify them in terms of their deviation angles and the possibility of having a radius at that particular point. The additional data which is required because of to tomorrow once it is being finalized and then it is being developed as a width cross section. Then we are also going to have a pavement constructed there as a carriageway for that we need to know what is there in terms of soil. So, the examination of the soil you have to take out the material do various tests which are required. Hydraulic data, hydraulic data is I said what is the width of the channel, what is the high flood level being marked in that one ok. So, all those things the drainage data in terms of if there are any subsidiary channels say water is coming through this side or water is also coming from this side. So, these subsidiary channels how they are coming or they may be creating an impact on the other side also everything has to be recorded and this has to be done for each and every alternative which is being taken up to a step preliminary survey. Then once we are having these informations then we are going to going to create the contours, but for contours what we will need is the data on the levels along the ground. So, we are going to have the levels along the ground that is what we are going to talk next also and on that is going to result now that along this one then the longitudinal maps and plans are going to be there. And if you remember we talked about this in the very starting when we have started with the alignment design the first interaction we had where I have shown you that there is going to be a sheet where on this side the elevations are going to be there and the another side we are also going to have an idea that how the road is going 
and whether there are different curves being provided at different locations. So, plan and elevations are going to be there along with the challenges. So, those type of longitudinal maps and plans are also going to be prepared on the basis of the information which we have collected. When another thing which we are doing is a leveling as I said. So, this leveling is going to be, so this is an alignment. So, at regular intervals we are going to do the levels. So, we have to identify that what are the changes which will define the rise and fall along uh, the alignment. So, that is to be done and that is going to be done at regular intervals. So, it may be like uh, 30 meters each. And another thing is because this is going to be developed tomorrow as a section. So, we need to look at the cross section conditions here also. So, we are going to take levels in the transverse direction. So, these levels in the transverse direction, if I try to see that if this is my ground level and then I have taken level. So, it may result that there is going to be something like this or there is going to be something like this, whereas I am going to construct my cross section here or I am going to construct my cross section here. In this case, there is going to be more of cutting and then filling, but here this is more or less just graded. So, these things are going to happen in terms of cross section when you do those transverse levels also. So, they are also important to be done. And another thing is that we have to fix up at regular intervals the benchmarks and these benchmarks have the levels and these levels may be with respect to a specified geodetic level which is available in that area from the survey of India sheets and all. So, that benchmarking is also important because then with respect to that only we are going to do of each and everything. Now, once we have got all of this information in hand, then it is going to allow you to do the earthwork along the alignment and you are going to have the desired cross sections which are required as per the category of the road. And finally, based on the size of the facility, earthwork requirements, characteristics and the suitability of the locally available material material, machine, manpower, specific requirements which may be there because of some reasons. All of these things they are going to convert it into the cost estimates and a decision is going to be taken that whatever two or three alternatives which were left which we have been in, uh, studied in detail under the preliminary survey which is one we are going to select or whether the one we have done now is a final one or the other one is going to be the final one. So, these steps are going to give that information. So, once you have got that information in hand, then what you are going to do is you are going to try to see that first of all, is there any requirement which is being left? Most of the time those requirements are not going to be left because you have collected ample information under the previous step of preliminary survey. But if it is there, we do that and then the fixing of the center line of the selected alignment and field is being done by using transit survey and the pegging. So, transit survey means we keep moving very fast along that one and then keep putting the pegs at the specified locations at the specified distances. So, that we know now this is how we are going to follow tomorrow. Now, this pegging which is being done this is along the center line, but this pegging can also be done at different locations. I am going to show that. Uh, further. And once this proper marking of point of transit, horizontal intersection points, start and end of circular curve and transition curves are being done on the ground, then this is going to help to the uh, construction team how to develop this particular alignment into a cross section. Also, those extra cross sectional points, benchmarks, referencing, etc., are also going to be placed at a location, and that is how it is being done as being shown here. What you can see is that there is a center line. So, there are pegs being provided, then the pegs are being provided at the extremities of the shoulders also. So, as to define what is going to be this roadway and then at the, if it is in the say an embankment, then we also have the, uh, these uh, pegs which are being provided at the end of the slope or there is a total right of way which is to be marked by way of those uh, uh, pegs. So, there are different type of pegs which are being used and along with that there will be reference pegs which will define that uh, for uh, for benchmarkings etcetera also. So, this is how the things are going to be set up in the final survey. 
Now once all of these things being done then the last thing which is there is that we need to have a report and this report is going to be utilized for the construction. So whatever the things are there in this report let us look at that. It is a extensive or a elaborative document and this extensive and elaborative documents provides an information of each and every aspect of the work and how this work is going to be taken up in sequential manner, in timely manner and in a smooth manner. So, we are looking at the sequence and when we are looking at this sequence at what time, how type of resources are required, resources of course all of the three components and when that particular work is to be completed, so by what time, but what date all of those things and are there any risk and how we can rectify or remedy those particular risks. So, in that case if you have the complete information I am going to tell you what further informations are there in the case of detailed project reports. It is important that if you have this document it will help you to complete the work in time, complete the project within the cost estimates, the no escalation of cost is going to be there and finally what you are going to get is a good quality product. So, the essentials which are there are the information about the project, the experience and skills of the people who are involved in that project financing and its sources, the various approvals which needs to be taken from the government, then the lo location detail where this is, what is the summary, what is the sketch of the alignment where in which connects the two locations, various types of surveys related to hydrological, soil, geological whatever those surveys are there, the results of those tests which have been conducted to see whether the things are appropriate enough or not and can be utilized. So, we have to see the design direction also, the raw materials which are required, their estimates, their specifications with respect to the uh, MORTH guidelines, Indian Road Congress guidelines, traffic data and this traffic data is going to culminate into demand and then it is going to culminate into the size of the facility design of pavement, intersection designs and improvements, the various things related to the drainage works like in the longitudinal direction, in the transverse direction and if there is a requirement on any specific structure. So, what type of a structure, what is its design, what are the drawings of that because finally the drawings are going to be utilized in field for the construction. The road furniture details, the installation plans with drawings we have discussed about all of these things, the various estimates or requirements say manpower, machinery, cross-sectional details and drawings which are giving you earthwork. So, those computations and drawings, the BOQs or the abstract of cost to be prepared in terms of estimates, plans and drawings which are ready for construction and the details of various securities to be given to financial organizations or the information or timeline, management team, etcetera, etcetera. So, all of these together they constitute a report which can be something like 30, 40, 50, 100 pages depending on the magnitude of that project. So, this is the type of uh, a detailed project uh, report which can look up, this, this is for the Ministry of Urban Development detailed project report which is being prepared for under the urban infrastructure and government's mission. Various components are going to be there of that and that is how what you get is a document you are going to use in field for construction. With this we close our interaction here and we will be continuing with our interaction on alignment design further. Until then, thank you and goodbye.